Amen. It's been an honor to be here. I've enjoyed every second of it. Amen. It's just been a, a, a blessing to preach to people that are that are word hungry. I appreciate you for being here, and I want to echo what he said. All the people that makes this happen, you just don't have church. People get together and they they make things make things happen. And I appreciate so much everything that everybody's done. Thank you for visiting our our, our product table. We uh, just just the way you bless it is just been amazing. We just praise God, praise God for you. Amen for for doing that. That keeps us going. The church is all over all over our nation. Amen. You have your Bibles, look with me in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 14. Pray for me in the morning. I'm going to be up a tree, and it's 29 degrees. Amen. It don't get 29 degrees, but twice in Georgia per year. Amen. And I'm usually gone both those times. Amen. But uh, but Brother uh, Steve took me out there today, and I put out my tree stand, and he went on, and I said, well, I'm going to ride around a little bit. And I rode right by the field where my tree stand was, and there was 14 deer standing there by my tree stand and one big buck. I said, God, just let them stay right there till in the morning. Amen. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 1 through verse 6. If you will, we stand in reverence to the reading of the Word of God. How many of you would say, how many of you would agree with me tonight that the church of today seems to be living under the provision that God has made? When I say under, I'm saying we're not. We're not exercising the provision and enjoying the provisions that God has given to the church. Think about the nine gifts of the Spirit. Think about the nine fruits of the Spirit. Wow. I read one time where a dove, a dove is a symbol of the Holy Ghost, and a dove has nine major flight feathers on each wing. And, and, and if you've got nine gifts and nine fruits, amen, for the dove to stray, fly right, you've got to have them all working inside of the church. He told us in the last days that we would cast out deep devils and lay hands on sick people and they would recover. I don't know about you, but I ain't seen a devil cast out in a while. Are you still in the building with me? Amen. It ain't because there's no devil shortage. Are you with me? Amen. And I say, God, help us tonight to understand that there's healing in this house. He said, by your stripes we were healed. There's salvation. He ain't quit saving nobody. You can fill us with the Holy Ghost. He ain't quit filling nobody. He, 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 he can deliver us from whatever has us bound. There's people in this room tonight, and as I was praying today in the motel, God just really, really spoke to me that there's people here tonight that's been praying for something for a long time. And I just believe tonight, I just by faith, believe that tonight God's going to show you it was there all the time. All you had to do uh, was receive it. I heard a story one time of a woman that froze to death on the streets and living in, the, living in a cardboard box and a bag lady, if you will. And whenever they found her and went through her stuff, they found thousands upon thousands of dollars. She had just stuck back and hoarded. She had it there to live comfortably, but she chose to, to live in poverty. And so many times the church is that way. God has provided a lot more than what we're experiencing. Are you, I, 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 I know I've said this three times, but are you still are you still in the house with me? Amen. So tonight, I believe that God is going to, I want you to get in your mind a specific thing that you've been praying for, a specific thing that you're believing God to do. And tonight, I believe it, that, that when this altar call is given, that you can come down this altar and receive that very thing, amen, that you, that you, that God has placed in your heart to be hungry for. Look with me in 1 Samuel chapter 14. Begin reading in verse 1. 1 Samuel 14. Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said unto the young man that bare his armor, Come and let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. But he told not his father. And Saul tarried in the uttermost part of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree, which is in Magron. And the people that were with him were about 600 men. And Ahai, the son of Ahitub, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh, was wearing an ephod, and the people knew not that Jonathan was gone. And between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over unto the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side. The name of the one was Bozaz. Bozaz means a muddy place, a mud bog. And the name of the other was Shanae. Shanae means a thorny bush. Has anybody ever been between a thorny bush and a bog hole? Amen. Amen. 
the forefront of the one was situated northward against Mixmatch, and the other southward against Gibeah. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, Come and let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or to save by few. Now get this picture. They're surrounded by the enemy. The Philistines' garrison is there. Saul is up under a pomegranate tree hanging out with some guys praying. But Jonathan said, let's go see what God will do for us. And then the battle came. Wow, what a battle it was. Wasn't nobody there but Jonathan and his armor bearer, but they won the battle. And when they won the battle, this is where the story picks up. People started coming and being a part of them again. People started coming out the woodworks. Amen. That's what revival will do. Look, look what he says. Skip all the way down to verse 21. Moreover, the Hebrews that were with the Philistines before that time, which went up with them to the camp from the country round about, even they also turned to be with the Israelites that are with Saul and Jonathan. Likewise, all the men of Israel which had hid themselves in the mountain when they heard that the Philistines fled, even they also followed hard after them in the battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over unto Beth Haven. And the men of Israel were distressed that day because Saul had adjured the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food until evening, that I may be avenged of mine enemies. So none of the people tasted any food. And all they of the land came to the woods, and there was honey on the ground. And when the people were come to the woods, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan didn't hear when his father charged the people with the oath. Therefore he put forth the end of his rod that was in his hand, and he dipped it in the honey and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened. Father, I ask you tonight to let us see the spiritual honey that's on the ground tonight, Father. And God, I pray that through this message you show us you teach us, God, that the provisions that you have made for us to be healed, for us to be saved, for us to have peace, for us to have joy, for us to have prosperity, for us to be delivered. God, I pray that we see that honey is on the ground. And God, show us that it's ours for the taking. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Before you sit down, look at your neighbor, look him in the eye. Say, so if you don't like shouting, I believe I'd move if I was you. Amen, amen, and amen. So many times the people of God, so many times the preachers of God, especially in the, in, in, in the church of God and the circles that we run in, we quit preaching on prosperity and blessings from God. The reason why is because the television, the TV evangelists and whatnot, a lot of them have, have exploited that so much that preachers try to, that we kind of stay away from it. I've been, I've had people say, you're not one of those prosperity preachers. And, and in defense, I would say, oh no, I'm not. And one day I got to thinking, wait a minute. Yes, I am. I belong to a king. Can somebody help me? Amen. I got a home in glory land that'll outshine them all. My father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the tater in them hills. Can somebody help me? Amen. So God help us to understand that we don't need to ride around with a poverty mentality. And always, it amazes me, the church, I, when Whenever I, I, I was pastoring, I wouldn't let my people or the folks, I wouldn't let them have fundraisers that, that somebody didn't get something for their money. I had a group one time, my youth group come and said, Pastor, we want to have a rock-a-thon. I said, what is a rock-a-thon? Well, we're going to get pledges to, to rock in rocking chairs all night long. I said, what good is that? Let's have a rake-a-thon. Can somebody help me? Amen. Let's find a widow woman in the church that needs her yard rake, and y'all go raise money per hour to go rake that widow. One of the biggest fundraisers raiders they ever ever had and there was a widow woman just bless her socks off even the newspaper come down and done a big article on the rake-a-thon amen nobody cares about a rock-a-thon can help me amen whenever I went back to my hometown to build the church that I built Jessup Georgia was my hometown and, and when I went back to build it I, I wouldn't let the folks I said we got a big vision we got to raise a lot of money 
but we ain't going to go out and raise it in the community. We're not going to, uh, David said, I'm old and now I was young, now I'm old. I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed out begging for bread. If we got depending on somebody to buy a chicken or to pay $10 to get their car washed and you, and you didn't know your car was dirty until you brought it to the car wash, then you had to go get it clean. Can somebody, oh, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Or to buy some $2 chance on a quilt that nobody wants. If that's the way we're going to see the vision, then God, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. You see, I used, I wasn't always a preacher. I worked at the mill, and I got tired of walking out, and, and all the churches lined up trying to get me to buy something. Amen. So I told my staff, I said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to be a blessing. And, and my youth pastor spoke up and said, I got, I got an idea. He went and bought a thousand light bulbs and went around all the businesses in town and gave them light bulbs. Said, we just want to let, we want the light of Jesus to shine. Guess what? Those people saw that we wasn't about their money, and money follows ministry. All we done was ministry and God began to bless and man we just seen God move in ways we ain't never seen before. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because we've got to lose the poverty mentality inside the church. Is anybody with me? Amen. And so tonight my prayer is that we as a body, not just as a body, but as individuals, that we will see that God's got a blessing for us, that God's got some things that we've been worrying about. He's already got them handled. Amen. Now here in this story we read a very powerful thing. First of all, let me back up and say this. Some of you I've already lost because you're thinking, well, I just don't believe it that way. God wants to bless his children. He wants to bless them according to his ability. How do I know that? Look in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's read verses 1 through verse 8. Let's just read them quick. Amen. Because I want to get I want to get the altar call so bad tonight I, I can't hardly stand it. Amen. It shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God and to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. Look what he says. That, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee and thou shalt be hearkened unto the, if you'll hearken unto the voice of the Lord blessed shall you be in the city blessed shall you be in the field blessed shall be the fruit of your body he said your young is going to be blessed and the flocks of your sheep amen blessed shall, blessed, you, blessed shall be your kind your cows and the flocks of your sheep blessed shall be thy basket and thy store blessed shall thou be when you come in blessed shall thou be when you go out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in the church house or the store houses. Amen. And in all that you put your hand to. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God has given thee. I don't know about you but that makes me want to shout because he didn't love them Old Testament children no more and he loves us New Testament children and he said I want to bless you when you come in the house I want to bless you when you go out I want everything that you put your hand to I want it to be a blessing church of God let's start living the way God wants us to live he don't want us limping into heaven he won't wow so we see in this story that I read a very powerful powerful illustration the people, the enemy of God was there. The enemy of God's people were there. And, and, and there's three things tonight that I want to teach you and show you through this word that I believe is going to spark some faith in us to reach out and, and, and get that that God has got in store for, for us. Amen. The very first thing I want to talk to you about is the blessing. There was literally honey on the ground. The second thing I want to talk to you about is the one that could not receive the honey on the ground or that did not receive the honey on the ground. And then the last point, I want to talk to you about the one that did receive the honey on the ground. Those are the three points of the message tonight. And I hope and pray that we grab a hold of it and it builds our faith to the place that we'll not leave here tonight without that thing that God has in store for. I come here tonight with, a, with, a, with, a, with something I want God to do. I come here tonight with God say, me saying to God, God, I'm expecting some honey to be 
on the ground. You see, I, I, again, I said this last night, 90% of the preaching that I get, I do. So I've got to receive what God gives me to give to you. So the very first thing let's look at is the blessing. The blessing was the honey on the ground. Understand, these people had fought the battle, they had run the enemy off, and there was a bunch of honey laying on the ground. But most of the people said, we can't eat it. We can't eat it. They walked away hungry. They walked away in need. But Jonathan, he got honey on the ground. So the first thing I want us to look at is that honey on the ground. The very first thing I noticed is it had to be a supernatural thing. I love to hunt. I've said that several, several times. I like to hunt. I shouldn't say I love it because you shouldn't never love something that can't love you back. Amen. I, I, I like my truck a whole lot. Amen. I can't love it because my truck don't love, don't love me back. Amen. But I, I like to hunt. And I hunt in a lot of different places. When I go to Revival, I don't go there to hunt. But if I, if I go to Revival and there's a hunting season and there's somebody in there that'll take me hunting, I'll go. They ain't even got to take me. If they'll just point me to some woods, I'll go. Amen. But Here's the point. I've been in the woods and I've been in Maine. I bear hunted in Maine. Yeah, I go bear hunting. Yeah. Took my wife with me one year and, and she got mad at me. I, she, when I told her, I said, Here, take these honey buns and smear them all over yourself and go sit under that tree over there. She got fighting mad. Amen. Amen. I'm kidding. Amen. I go bear hunting in Maine. I've been all over Alaska. I preached their camp meeting and went scouting out. I didn't get to go hunting, but went to scout. I've been to Africa. They wouldn't let me take a gun, but they let me hunt in Kruger Park. Amen. I got to have a guide and we went, we went hunting. I've been in woods all over Georgia. I've been in the woods in Illinois. I've been in the woods all over, all over the country. Amen. Chasing a white-tailed deer or a, or a turkey or a bear. Amen. And listen to me. I, I guarantee you, I've been doing this since I was eight or nine years old, able to follow behind my daddy. I, if they was honey just dropping on the ground, I would have found it. That's not. That don't happen. There's not honey laying on the ground anywhere. This was a supernatural blessing. God said, I'm going to take the honey and I'm going to put it on on the ground in front of these people because when they get through fighting the battle, when they get through doing what I've called them to do, they're going to be weary and I want to bless them with something that will continue to bless them. So I'm going to give them the honey on the ground. Oh good God Almighty, I just believe tonight that some of you are in here and you're weary. Some of you fought the battle and God said you ain't going to leave here tired tonight because I got some honey on the ground that I'm going to drop for you to take and get now let me show you something about 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 this honey where's all my help Seth come on now why are you sitting over there in the middle where I can't get where I can't use you come on come on down here Seth now see we got to wait on you amen and you want to be a preacher my God amen Stand right there, Seth, if you don't mind. Stand right there if you don't mind. Come come here, Brother Jeremy, if you don't mind. Come over here. Come over here. I want you to stand over there. I want you to stand over there, Brother Jeremy. Here, take that box of tissues, if you will. Go stand right over there. Amen, if you don't mind. Now, I want you to take your God, okay? Your God. I want you to take a couple of those tissues and just drop them on the ground. Drop them on the ground. That's the honey on the ground. Now, I want you to get this picture, if you will. Oh, come on this way. Oh, that's enough. That's enough. You ain't doing it like I wanted you to do. I told you to stand over there. Amen. You're messing up my illustration. Hey, just go sing a song. You do that good. Amen. 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. God, God dropped the honey on the ground. But one thing God didn't do, he didn't remove the enemy that was between them and the honey on the ground. That was up to them to walk. I believe that God's got blessings for us. But there's an enemy that's between us and that blessing. It could be doubt. It could be fear. Am I making sense? It could be doubt. It could be fear. It could be apathy. It could be whatever you can think of. There's an enemy that wants to keep you from the blessings of God. And if God don't help us, if God don't help us, we'll just be over here and we'll be complaining and we'll live in such a way that our children won't want what we got. And so they say, I don't want to go to church. Daddy served God. Look at him. Amen. And God help us to understand that we God 
don't want us to stay here because some devil has got between us and the blessings that he's got in store for us. That's the reason he gave us scriptures like this. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. He gave us scriptures like this. Those that are for you far outnumber those that are against you. He gave us scriptures like this. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that rises itself up against thee shall... He gave us scriptures like this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm tired of sitting here eating beans when God's got a steak over there and all I got to do is get past this enemy that he's given me power to get past. Amen. So the honey was on the ground. There was an enemy between him and them. I believe that some of the greatest blessings of God, he's already provided them. But we, we let the enemy scare us to the place that we won't receive it. Think about the enemy for just a moment. When I think about the enemies in the Word of God, I always think about Goliath. Goliath was a bad boy. Goliath was was six cubits tall. Whoa. He had six pieces of armor. Whoa. He had six fingers on his hands. Six, six, six. He was the number of flesh. He was the number of man, the number of antichrist, if you will. The Bible tells me how big he was. The Bible tells me about all his armor. But the Bible don't ever tell me that he ever killed anybody. His name, Goliath, means means sorcerer. And one that, that brings fear with their tongue. Goliath wasn't some bad warrior. He was just used to come out and scare the people of God. Whoa. He ain't never killed nobody. Praise God, David got up and said, hey, he killed him with a slingshot. Are you still with me? Amen. He wasn't bad. I bet he still lived with his mama. Can somebody help me? Amen. He wasn't bad. He just taught the bad game. That's exactly what the devil has done to the church. He has taught us out of the power of the Holy Ghost. He has taught us into thinking that the revival time for the church is over. He has taught us into settling where we're at instead of winning our communities. He has taught us into saying that there's just no hope. There's no way we can come against this or that. It's time for somebody to bow their spiritual chest out and say, is there not a cause? I'm not going to let that uncertainty circumcised Philistine keep me from the blessings and the power and the authority of the God that gave his son that I can live forever. Whoa. So the the honey on the ground, it was dropped by God. It was supernatural. But there was an enemy between them and the honey on the ground. So this supernatural, y'all can be seated. That supernatural, leave that there. That supernatural That supernatural gift, the blessing, the honey on the ground. I challenge you tonight to think for just a moment. What honey on the ground do you need? I believe there's somebody here tonight that says, I need a healing. And God says, I've dropped it. Somebody here tonight saying, God, I need deliverance. God, I need restoration. I need my family to be restored. I need my marriage to be worked on. I need, God, I need, I, I need a devil kicked out of my house. Whoa. God, I want to win my, my daughter. I want to win my son. God, I want to win my, my husband. One thing I like about these tissues, you, you pull one out and another and just pops right up. Amen. Because God never runs out of honey. Are you still with me? Whatever you need, he's got it, and he, he didn't cost him nothing to give it to you. He still, he still got everything he had whenever he started. Amen. Some of us in this building tonight are thinking, God, I just need a financial blessing. I got more month than money. God said, I, I, I'll bless you according to the riches in heaven. In heaven, we make the streets. Out of, out of pure gold. Amen. So God help us to understand that there's honey dropped all over the ground. But there'll be some of us tonight that'll leave here the way we came. Because, the next point, what kept people from receiving it? Let's talk about the ones that didn't get the honey. There was a bunch of them. Wow. 
There were 600 of them hanging out up under a pomegranate tree with Saul. They didn't get a mouthful of the honey that God had given the, for, for them to take. Matter of fact, when they walked by the honey, they said, you don't understand. Saul has told us, Saul has told us that we can't eat no honey. We can't take that that God has provided for us. Now, the very first thing I noticed about them was that verse 3, in, or verse 2 and 3 of 1 Samuel chapter 14. Look what it says. It, it names all the names of the people that they were hanging with. Saul tarried in the uttermost part of Gibeah up under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migron. Now look at verse 3. This is so, when I, when I found this, I went, wow, amen. Come here, Brother Jeremy, i got to use you one more time. He, he went, amen. Come here, brother, what you laughing at? i got to use you too. Amen, 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 come on. I need, where's Seth? Seth, you went back and sit up here. Seth, amen. My God, come here, brother, and help me right here. Just say, come here, brother, means you already up with the brown shirt. Come on up here, come on, come on up here. I need five of you, amen. Look, what he, look, where, look who they were hanging, look who they were hanging out with. Y'all just stand there shoulder to shoulder if you don't mind. The Bible said look, look at verse 3. They hung out with a man named Ahai. Ahai is a good name. You know what it means? Brother of God. Woo! I'm not to hang out with Ahai, brother of God. That's good people to hang with. Then they got Ahitub. Lord have mercy. Who would name their kid Ahitub? Amen. <laughs> they got Ahitub. His name means brother of goodness. Woo! Pretty good guys to hang out with. But listen, just because you got one that's brother of God and one that's brother of goodness, whoo, they had three. Man, this is tough. Hey, hey, I, the son of Atop, Ichabod, oh my goodness. You know what Ichabod stands for? Ichabod means the glory is gone. I don't care how much goodness you got or how much God you got. If you ain't got faith that his glory is still real, it ain't going to happen hard on me but did all the visitors was the shouters the visitors amen. <laughs> amen amen so we got God is brother God is God is a brother of goodness we got the glory of God is gone Phinehas oh my goodness Phinehas you know what Phinehas was guilty of he, he was guilty of taking false fire down to the altar and keeping the altar of incense going he, he let the fire go out so he took false fire in other words, he was those that nothing was happening down at the church. He was just working it up. Are you still with me? Amen. So you're hanging there with God is my brother. God is good. Hanging there with <laughs> the glory is gone. Hanging there with fake fire. And then Eli, oh my goodness. The Bible said Eli. Eli would allow anything to happen. He allowed his sons to, to commit adultery on the steps of the church. He would not do anything about it. He didn't take care of himself. The Bible said he was a fat man. And when they came and told him that the glory of God had been taken because of stuff that he had done, he didn't repent. He just fell over backwards and broke his neck. Because, the, again, the Bible said he was a fat man. He just fell over off his chair and died. So we got a man there that just allows anything. We got somebody there that's got a fake fire. We got somebody that believes the glory is gone. But, yeah, they still got a, they still got a oh, my God, help me. They still look like they're good but they're not they got a form of godliness but they're denying the power there up that's good preaching right there now I don't care I, I got to give myself an offering amen oh well I'll just give it all to me amen but watch this the reason they couldn't get the honey is this was the group they were hanging out with you see if you're going to get the blessings of God, you got to be careful who you hang out with. God help us. Help us because we're tempted. We're tempted in the church to allow anything. To allow anything to happen just to keep a crowd. Let me tell you something. A crowd, uh, yes, I believe God adds to the church daily. I believe people need to be saved every time the doors are open. But a crowd don't mean it's God. 
You can have a blue light special on a Black Friday at Walmart and they'll get a bigger crowd than any church in the in the bunch. But that same that same old woman in there will slap you over a tickle me elmo doll. Amen. It ain't got nothing to do with God. But I say, God, help us to understand we've got to be the godly people that you want us to be. I don't want to. I had a music minister tell me, I love y'all's music here. And I'm not saying that just because I'm here. Y'all done took up the offer and I'm leaving. Amen. But hear me. Y'all got good worship here. I was in the church not long ago. The music minister leaned over to me and said, how do you want me to leave them? I looked at him and said, what do you mean? You want me to leave them shouting or leave them crying? I looked at him and said, I just want you to leave them. If you got to work it up, I don't want it. If it ain't real, I don't want to be a part of it. But we got that happening all over the place. And then we got people that they won't let God move. We got to be through by 12 o'clock. We got to be, I preached at one church, and I love all churches, and I'm not talking about them, amen. But I preached at one church, the guy told me, he said, if you go one minute past 12, there's a door that opens, and it sucks you down onto the ground, and you won't ever see you again, amen. God help us. We are living in a time where we're hanging out with people that are telling us it can't happen no more. And it matters who you hang with. With. If you want to see God move, it matters who you hang with. Let me show you how how, how important how important it is who you who you hang with. Hey, you, you, you sit down, brother Eli. Come here, come here, Seth's wife. I haven't run your name. Come here, Seth's wife. Amen. Pregnant lady, <laughs> one that can't breathe because she's pregnant. Made me understand the reason I can't breathe. When she said that the other day, she said, "I can't breathe. I'm pregnant." And I said, well, God, why can't I breathe? He said, you eat too many pregnant chickens. Amen, amen. But watch this. Here we go. Stand right here, if you will. I need me a little girl. I need me. No. Don't let him mess up, man. I need to make you sit down. Amen. I need me a young lady. I need me a young I need me a young lady. Where's my young redhead? Come here. I know you're. I know. Don't cuss. I read lips. Amen. Come on down here. Amen. Come on down here. Amen. Come on down here. If you will, stand. Just, just, just sit right there. I'm going to pretend like you're dead, but just sit right there. There's a story in the Bible that's very powerful. Now, first of all, let's go back to the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians tells me this, that God's given a five-fold ministry gift to the church. He's given some to be apostles. He's given some to be evangelists. He's given some to be prophets and some pastors and some teachers. There used to be a proverb that they taught, that the hand was a symbol of the five-fold ministry gift. The thumb represents the apostle. It's the only finger on your hand that can touch all the other fingers. It's the apostle. The evangelist is your pointing finger because the evangelist says, hey, it's turn or burn, go to heaven, amen. He points the way. The prophet is the longest middle finger because when you raise your hands, it's the one closest to God. He's got to hear from him. I'm not going to hold that finger up by myself, amen, by itself, amen, because I'll be done something that y'all be mad about, amen. Somebody told me the other day, well, my God, they're running all over uh, to the... To the altar, amen. Somebody, somebody told me the other day, says, I got a problem shooting birds at people when they get mad at when they pull off and pull in front of me at the, at the red light and whatnot. He said, I, I just can't control it. I said, they said, what do you do, pastor? I said, I wave at them and smile. He said, what do you mean? I said, I just shoot them a whole flock at one time, amen. <laughs> All right, let's get on past that, amen. But the five-fold ministry gift. I believe that whenever Elijah was praying and he told Gehazi, I remember he was praying for rain, and he told Gehazi to go look and see if rain's coming. Gehazi come back and said, I see a cloud and it's like a man's hand. And Elijah girded up his loins and took off. He said, it's about to rain because that five-fold ministry gift is there. Now let's go fast forward to the New Testament. Here's Jesus. I'm going to be him. There's a man named Jairus had come to him. A man named Jairus had come to him. Come here, Jairus. A man named Jairus had come to him and said, my daughter is sick. And on the way there, the daughter died. When they got to the place, when they got to the place, the, they said, you're too late. The girl's dead. Jesus said, she ain't dead. She's just asleep. And all the people started laughing at him. And he looked at, he looked at, he said, everybody get out the room. Everybody leave. In other words, Jesus was saying, I'm not going to be able to do this with the wrong crowd in here. He said, the only people I want to stay, I want, I want Peter, 
I want Peter, I want James, I want John, and I want Mama and Daddy. That's all I want. Mama, get on that side if you will. Mama and Daddy, that's all I want there. When he got Apostle Peter, amen, when he got Evangelist James, when he got the prophet John, and he got Pastor Daddy and Mama the teacher, are you still with me? When he got the five-fold ministry gift in place, it wasn't until he got them in place that he looked at the girl and spoke in tongues. He said, to lift thy, to lift thy, come I. This being interpreted, damsel, arise. And she got up and started eating steak that night. Amen. What am I saying? It matters who you hang with. Could the reason we're not seeing our daughters resurrected is we're hanging out with Ichabod instead of hanging out with pop prophets and evangelists and God help us to get to the place where we'll use our gifts that God calls us to to be the people that people can hang out with and be delivered from the power of the enemy. Whoa, y'all can be seated. Wow. This group, this group that didn't receive hung out with the, the wrong crowd. Look at this. This group that couldn't receive were told they couldn't receive. Saul had told them it ain't going to happen no more. Now, God, help me preach this and preach it right because i got to hurry tonight. I know it's Wednesday night and the kids have got to go to bed. But hear me. Too many of our churches aren't experiencing a move of God anymore because we got people in our pulpit telling them it can't happen no more. I've had people tell me, quit preaching miracles. We don't live. We live in a post-miracle season. I say, that's crazy. It's crazy. That's to say that Jesus ain't the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we got people telling that stuff. And we've got the congregations taught in to not believe in it anymore. Whoa. We got the world taught in to not believe in the power of our God anymore. This group that didn't receive the honey, they wasn't, they wasn't hanging with the right people, but they were told, they were told that they couldn't they couldn't receive it, and they believed it. Now, because they didn't receive the blessing, listen to this, they defied the law of God. Look at verse 32 and verse 33. God gave them honey. If they had ate the honey, they would have been satisfied. But because they didn't eat the honey, look, and the people flew upon the spoil. They took sheep and oxes and calves and slew them on the ground. And the people did eat them with the blood. Then, the, then they told Saul, saying, Behold, the people sin against the Lord in that they eat with the blood. And Saul said, Saul said, You've transgressed. Just roll a stone unto me over me this day. Whoa. Because they didn't eat the honey. They filled themselves up with things that was defying to God. We're living in a day. We're living in a day where too many of our Holy Ghost filled people have to take a pill to go to sleep, have to take a pill to get up. We have to take a pill for depression. We have to, am I making, we have to go see secular counselors? My God. We go seek secular count. We go see people for counseling that ought to be down at our altars getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Whoa. We, we, because we're not getting filled with the honey, we're looking for something to satisfy in another place. The same amount of our kids, same percentage of our kids in the church get hooked on drugs as the world's kids do. Why? Because they're not getting the honey. And because they're not getting the honey, they're getting the marijuana and the meth and the liquor and the beer. Because they're not getting the honey, they're getting the premarital sex and all the stuff that the devil offers that defies the law of God. When you get full of the honey, you ain't got room for the stuff the devil. Come on, just a little bit. They didn't eat the honey, and because they didn't eat the honey, they filled themselves up with things that defied God. I was pastoring in St. Mary's, and St. Mary's is about 75 miles from, from my hometown, and, 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 and we built a church there, but, but anyhow, during deer season, Daddy always took that week off, and so I took that week off to come down and hunt with my Daddy. And, and on the way down, and I was going to get there late because I'd worked late at the office, and I was going to get there kind of late. Well, there's a, there's a restaurant right up one mile from my house. It's a greasy spoon restaurant. It's called the Dairy Ranch. They have foot-long hot dogs there. 
and they got some kind of sauce on it that's good. They batter their French fries. I mean, just batter them. I mean, you could just look at them and gain five pounds. And so I got to thinking, well, I got to eat. And I got to thinking, boy, I'd like to have me a foot-long hot dog. Well, I stopped there and I ate every inch of that foot-long hot dog. I ate a half a pound of them battered fries and drank me a big old Coca-Cola. And I just sat under an oak tree down at the dairy ranch and done it. Then I drove down to Mama's. When I walked up to Mama, Mama flew the door open. She said, son, I knew you were coming. I knew you were going to be a little bit late. So I fixed you your favorite meal. I fixed you cube deer steak. I fixed you mashed potatoes and them little green peas. I got you some gravy to go on your mashed potatoes. I got you them cat head biscuits that, that mama makes the biscuits and puts her fingerprints in the top of them. Amen. I got you one I took out the oven before it was done just like you like it so it could melt some butter and be kind of be kind of damp on the inside. And for dessert, I got strawberry shortcake, your favorite dessert. I couldn't eat what mama had because I was filled up with a stinking foot-long hot dog and a pound of fruit fries. How many times do we come to church and we stop by the dairy ranch on the way here and we can't pick up the honey because we're full of the stuff that the world has got to offer us. I say God purge us tonight. Get all the stuff out of us and fill us up with the things of God. We talked about the blessing, the honey on the ground. We talked about the people that could not receive. They hung with the wrong people. They were told they couldn't receive it. And because they didn't, they defied themselves with the things that God told them not to eat. But now let's look at the guy that did receive it. I want to learn from him, Jonathan. The first thing I find about this guy is he's a man of action. Look at verse 1. Look at verse 1. It came to pass upon a day that Jonathan, son of Saul, said to his army, Come and let us go over to the Philistines' gate. He was a man of action. Faith without works is dead. I know people, I have preached. God help me because I, I got too much pastor knowledge in my mind and it bubbles out sometimes. I have got up and preached my guts out about something and then somebody called me on Monday and asked me to pray for them for the very thing that I gave an altar call for. They were there but wouldn't come the altar. They wanted me to miss a hunting trip to go pray for them, and all they had to do was come to the altar on Sunday. Whoa, did I say that? I didn't mean to say that. Amen. How much do we miss? Because we won't get up and act on the words that God has told us to do. Wow. He was a man of action. He was a man of faith. He was a man, he was a man of faith. Verse 6 again. He said, who's to know? If God can save by many or he can save by few. I know there ain't nobody here with us, armor bearer, but that's okay because God don't need nobody. God by himself is a majority. So God can save us with just me and you or God can save with a crowd. It makes no difference to God. That's faith. Amen. You see, we always got to know where the rocks are before we get out of the boat and rock on water. But God says, hey, when are you going to start trusting me? It was me that hung the moon. It was me that hung the stars. It was me that called the world to turn on its axis. It was me that saved your soul. It was me that filled you with the Holy Ghost. It was me that healed your body. It was me that got you out of that last mess you was in. God help us to understand I can't put my confidence in man. A Republican, a Democrat, or a pastor can't do it. But I know a man who can, and he is God, Jehovah. And Whoa. He not only was a man of action, not only was he a man of faith, I'm staying in 1 Samuel 14. But he was also a man that was willing to try the spirits. God help us. Trying the spirits ain't a lack of faith. Whoa. Look what he said in, in 1 Samuel 14, verse, verse 9 and 10. He said, if they say, we're going to go up. We're just going to stay between this rock and this muddy spot. And he said, if they say to us, tarry until we come to you, then we'll stand still in our place and not go up to them. But if they say thus, come up to us, then we'll go up. For the Lord has delivered them. And he was willing, he was willing to try the spirits of God. I know too many people that get in trouble and then they want to blame God. I, I don't, I got a Facebook. I wouldn't have one for years. Like I told you all that the other night because I thought it was evil. 75% of marriages 
end up, and 75% of the divorces happen because of Facebook. Really. People talking to women they ought not talk to on the Facebook. I mean, when you look at my Facebook, it's got George hyphen Debbie on there. So if, if, if a lady starts talking any kind of way she shouldn't, I say, Debbie, you need to answer this one. <laughs> Amen, not me. Amen. Wow. But hear me, hear me. I started doing on Facebook little sermonettes. I call them simple truths. And the other day I was riding down the road, and, and if you go to my Facebook, you'll see this. I was riding down the road, and there was a turtle. Y'all have turtles here? There was a turtle that had tried to go through the fence, and he got stuck and died. And, and I rode by, and I seen that turtle on that fence, and the Holy Ghost just spoke to me. So I backed up and got my phone, I made a simple truth. I said, I want to introduce you to this turtle. This turtle was made round, but he tried to go through a square hole, and he died. I said, I guarantee you while he was dying, he was blaming the great God of the turtles. He was blaming Pastor Gopher. He was blaming his mom and daddy, but it ain't nobody's fault but him because he tried to be round and go through a square hole. There's too many people that blame God for things that God ain't told you to do. We want to blame God. And I went on and finished and said, Don't be like Ted the turtle. Amen. Amen. If you built round, if you built to do one thing, don't try to do something, something else. My God. My God. Then when you go broke, don't blame God about it if God didn't call you into it. We've got to be willing to try the spirits. Now, now some people put out fleeces, and, and, and I say, no, no, no. He put out a fleece there. We don't have to put out fleeces now. Remember, we, we get the word fleece from Gideon. Remember when God called Gideon uh, to, to, to lead his army? Gideon says, uh uh, God, you can't be calling me. I'm the least in my family, and my family's the least in the kingdom. And he said, I'm going to put out a bowl of fleece, a bowl of, a bowl of fleece. He said, in the morning, if, it, if the fleece is, 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 is dry and the ground around it's wet, then I'll go. Next morning he gets up, the fleece is dry, the ground around it's wet with the dew. Then he said, that ain't enough. So he put out a fleece again. He said, now, God, let the fleece be wet and the ground around it dry. The next morning, he just wrung the water out the fleece, and he got up and went, and he became a, the, the mighty man that God wanted him, wanted him to be. Now, we don't put out fleeces now. Uh, I, I've had people come to me and say, I, I, I didn't think I was supposed to marry him, but I put out a fleece, Pastor. Really? I, you know what I told one lady? She come here and said, I, I told her nothing to marry me. wasn't saved. She said, I know God said, but I put out a fleece. I said, yeah, and the devil came by and wee-weed on your wool, didn't he? Amen, amen. We don't put out fleeces now because we walk in the spirit that we may not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that Holy Ghost will quicken you when it ain't God. That Holy Ghost will quicken you and let you know, don't go there. That's the reason you need the gift of discernment. We are filled with the Holy. That's the reason we need the Holy Ghost, not just to speak in tongues, but so that we can be filled with him so we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh, so that we can have the gift of discernment, so that we can say, "Uh uh-uh, that ain't God. But we gotta be willing to try the spirits where they be of God. Whoa. The reason Jonathan received, he, 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 he didn't hang with the wrong crowd. But listen, he, had, he was a man of faith, a man of action. He was willing to try the spirit, but he wasn't in the place to hear that he couldn't. Look at verse 27. Look at verse 27. But Jonathan, he didn't hear it when they said don't eat the honey. He wasn't in the place not to he wasn't in the place to hear that he couldn't re- then he received it look look go on but Jonathan heard not from his father therefore he put forth the end of his rod that was in his hand and he dipped it in the honeycomb whoa he put his hand to his mouth and his eyes were enlightened then answered one of the people and said your father straightly charged the people with an oath saying curse be the man that eats the food on this day and the people were faint Then said Jonathan, my father's troubled the land. I pray you how mine eyes have have been enlightened because I've tasted just a little bit of this honey. How much more if everybody had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies which they found? For had there not been a now a a much greater slaughter among the Philistines? 
Jonathan said, I can see things I ain't never seen before because I tasted just a little bit of the honey. He said, what if the whole army had ate some? We could have done away with the enemy altogether. But because people were told they couldn't, hanging out with the wrong crowd, eating blood, because of that, the enemy still survived. They whipped them, but they didn't get rid of them. We got too many people coming down our altars and whipping the enemy, but they don't get rid of them. And in six weeks' time, they're right back where they were. I don't know how many people I know that comes down the altar and gets saved. And you'll see them three or four weeks, and then they'll fall by the wayside. It's because they don't eat the honey. They, they, they get enough to whip the enemy, but they don't get enough to destroy the enemy that's inside of them. I believe with all my heart, body, and soul that there's honey. Brother Jeremy, if you'll come up and get ready to, to play, I believe there's honey, there's blessings that God has for us. I, let me tell you what I, I, I prayed the other day, and you're going to think I'm weird when I've done this. I read a statistic that 80% of the people don't tithe. 80% of the people that are Christians don't tithe. 80%. 80%. Whoa. Now, somebody come to me the other day and says, if your God was real, why would he let people starve? Did you know if 100% of the people that were Christians pay tithe, it would eliminate world hunger? Every, every kid in the, in the world would have fresh water and be educated. We're doing what we're doing with 10%. Are you still with me? What if we had 10 times that? What could we do? Wow. But, but I, I prayed this the other day. I says, God, you said if I pay my tithe that you'll open up windows of heaven and pour out blessings on me that ain't even room enough for receipt. And if 80% of the people that say they're Christians aren't tithing, that means you, get, you can't open that window. That means you got a whole lot up there. God, I want theirs too. Just pour it out on me. I want a double portion. Because I want to do something for you. Are you still with me? The Bible tells us very plainly in the book of Proverbs to back what I just said up. He said the wealth of the sinner, it's a sin not to pay tithe, is laid up for the just. So I, got, I read that and I said, God, is that true? And all them people that are sinning not tithing, it's laid up. I'm, I'm living just. God, pour it out on us so that we can do a greater work for your kingdom. Whoa. So hear me. Tonight I ask you when we started I said there's going to be people here That there's something that you've been praying about For a long, long, long time There's something that you need God to do And God said I've dropped it on the ground I've dropped it on the ground You've got to have the faith to come get it I've dropped the honey. I've dropped the honey on the ground. And once you taste the honey, he said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Once you taste the honey, your eyes will be enlightened and you'll see things that you ain't never realized before. Whenever I was thinking about God and praying, Lord, how do we end this revival? Wow, what great services we've had. I don't know. Man, God's just moved every night. It's just been amazing. And the Lord, it was like the Lord just spoke to me and said, I want to bless them people tonight. I want to bless them. I just want to bless them. Too many of us evangelicals don't preach on the blessings of God no more. I just want to bless them. There's somebody there, I heard them the day they started praying. And I got the answer. All they got to do is get it. Come get it. So this tonight, I know it's it's very tangible for this me to have tissues everywhere. I believe in it so strongly that when God showed me this message a year or so ago, and I I took me a tissue and I put it. It's in my Bible. I put it in my Bible. There it is. I put it in my Bible. I keep it between the pages of my Bible to show God I want the honey I want the honey I don't want to be eating blood when you gave me honey I don't want to be faint we hear
hear words in the church world like burn out. The Bible says if it's possible, he would wear out the saints. And you can't get worn out and you can't get burnt out if you just keep eating the honey. So I say, God, tonight, whoa. He said it's a land where the milk and honey flow. God, there's honey on the ground. Now hear me, because this may sound strange to you, but tonight I'm going to give an altar call. And I'm simply going to ask you if there's something you've been needing God to do. If there's something you've been wanting God to do. If there's something you've been praying about for God to do. Then in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to come to this altar. And by faith, I want you to just pick up one of these tissues. In so doing, God, I'm not going to listen to doubt anymore. I'm not going to let an enemy keep me. I'm not going to let an enemy keep me from that that you have, that you have poured out for me to receive. God, I'm coming to get my honey on the ground. Father, God, speak to us tonight as individuals. God, there's people in this room. I know it because you told me when I started writing this message. You told me, God, there's going to be people here tonight that simply need what you've already provided. And God, I ask you that we simply do as Jonathan, that we have faith enough to act and get up and get the honey on the ground. God, I believe you're going to heal somebody tonight. I believe you're going to deliver somebody tonight. I believe, God, that you're going to put peace back where there's trouble. You're going to put joy unspeakable and full of glory where there's pain and doubt. So, God, I'm asking you tonight, let us see. I believe the honey on the ground is already there. By your stripes, we were healed. I believe the honey's already been dropped. But now, God, are we, are we going to hang out with Ichabod? Or are we going to come and get the honey on the ground? I ask you, Father, to bring that kind of faith upon us. Would you stand with me all over this house? For just a moment before anybody even moves, even if you got to leave, just wait just a second. Would you just lift your hands up toward heaven and begin to praise Him? Praise Him for the honey on the ground. Call those things that are not as if they are. Start worshiping Him for the honey on the ground. Start giving Him praise. God, I give you praise for what I'm asking you for tonight. I'm giving you praise right now. God, and, and God, I don't see any sign that it's going to happen or have ha has happened. But God, I give you praise as if it already has happened. So God, I'm asking you, I'm asking you tonight, Father, to take our praise. Just take our praise. Take our praise and let it open up the windows of heaven. And God, I'm asking you, Lord, let everyone in this room know that whatever it is, is provided through you, your power and your anointing. So Father, for the next, next 30 seconds, we're just going to give you praise for what you're about to do. Lead us, Brother Jeremy. Lead us, Brother Jeremy. I am blessed. 